this lesson we are going to create the base mesh for the helmet using box modeling technique now uh, we could have done the basic shape with a sphere but the reason I'm not in favor of sphere is that it has this topology issue at the top and we can't fix that uh, because all these points are converging to a single point and we can go and reduce these segments and then fix the flow of uh, the topology but that's going to take more time rather than I start by uh, creating the helmet from a box now for the box I'm going to click on the button here and go to the top viewport and I'll quickly create a box here and go back to perspective viewport at the moment I'm not going to uh, take care of the length and height and I just have to go with something like 100, 190 maybe so it just uh, nearly covers the reference images for the segments I'm going to stick with 666 uh, for all sides now there are usually several approaches the artists uh, try to follow one is some of the artists they start the base mesh with the minimum possible uh, polygons such as say 2 by 2 by 2 or maybe 3 by 3 and because they keep the optimization in mind since the beginning then there are artists that they try to start with fairly decent amount of uh, polygons around and then there are artists that they start off with they don't care much about the polygons they start and they finish their uh, product and then in the end they pay attention towards optimization now you should not stick uh, to the uh, point or to the policy of uh, paying too much attention towards the optimization in the beginning because then you won't be able to complete your uh, project within time because that's going to bother you time to time that you are adding more segments so here we are going to start with something uh, not very low and not very high and we'll see if optimization is required we'll do that in later stages so w once the box is created I'm going to go to modify panel and I'll press S and try to find the modifier that's called spherify and here it is I'll apply the spherify modifier I'm uh, going to set the percentage to 100 and right click and convert it to a editable poly notice how well these uh, segments uh, flow is pretty fine and that's what actually I need so once that is done I'm going to go to the top viewport and go to the polygon mode I'll select all the polygons on the left side and I'll press delete to remove those segments and then I'll go back to perspective view and have a look at my my, my mesh and the flow the polygon is uh, the edges have here the lines now I really need to adjust the flow a bit so I'll go back to the top viewport and I'll double click this uh, sorry I'll press 2 to go to the edge mode and double click here to select this now uh, throughout this tutorial remember I'll be using shift X uh, a shortcut that actually changes the constraint from none to edge and whenever I am to move any vertex over the surface of the sphere I'll have to shift from uh, from none constraint to edge because if you don't know the difference when you are in edge mode and you move around the, uh, the segments uh, it tends to flow with the uh, shape and it, in fact it will be much clearer with the vertex if I move this vertex it's going to move within this line so it's not going to affect the shape but if I turn this constraint off and I try to move it see how it it goes straight and it breaks the uh, line that it's following so it's very important that you move around the vertices using the edge mode else you're going to produce certain artifacts in the mesh which are pretty common in 3ds max and they appear and they're visible when there is slight uh, breakage in the topology or when the topology is not clean so I'm gonna go back to edge mode and make sure the edge is selected and I'm gonna press R 
and I'm going to scale it down until it's straight so it's pretty straight uh, similarly I'm going to straighten this up as well and keeping in mind the overall shape so I'll just drag it here and this one I feel comfortable with this I'll go to the left viewport now and one other thing I need to do is go back to polygon mode and I'll select all these polygons at the base and I'll delete them go to the border mode I'm going to select this uh, border in fact not the border I'll just go to the uh, edge mode and I'll double click this edge here to select the base all the uh, edges at the base and I'm going to go back to left viewport and I'll press R to activate the scale mode and scale them but before scaling again uh, make sure that the constraint is uh, set to none because if it's a, a set to edge the ed the vertices are follow trying to follow the edge which I don't want so I'll just set it to uh, the none mode and then I'm going to scale it down and just move it down as well slightly now once that is done I'll go back to the edge mode by pressing 2 double click and press R and scale it down and this one as well now um, I I will be trying my best to keep the for this one I need to uh, make the edge active by pressing Control X as a shortcut or I can go ahead and change it there for these I need to make sure that the segments around are in in equal distance so which they are I'll press L to go back to the left viewport and turn this off and I need to set the pivot point to exactly the center and bring it down next I will shape this up um, but before that let me just kill this up a bit I'll press alt X to turn on the see-through mode and I'll apply apply an FFD and turn this on and I am going to roughly match the shape of this helmet to the outline now remember I said that I'm not going to follow these line hundred percent but these are just to give me an idea of the overall flow of the or the shape of the helmet which I am trying to match as nearly as possible so I'll just move these around and then I am going to go to the front viewport and I'm going to move these points so I can get some shape like this and then I can move this up a bit now we can always come in and change the shape of the helmet that's not going to be a big deal at any instance of time now once I'm done with this I'll go to top viewport but this seems qu uh, quite messed up so I'll right click and collapse it and apply a fresh FFD and then I am going to move these vertices around and I I'm not following this shape uh, below because I'll be probably uh, changing them time to time I'm just eyeballing this overall shape trying to match it as close as possible I'll move this back and I guess this is fine and I'll right click and convert it to editable poly I'll press shift X and we have the basic shape ready now make sure that you uh, solo this out and have a look at the topology and that you don't usually you don't have weird artifacts because what happens usually is that sometimes you accidentally move a vertex and when you turn the wireframe off let me just show you what actually happens uh, you, you get these sort of artifacts if you can see them these lines and usually uh, they are visible but we'll try our best not to accommodate them and and if we could make a mesh that is cleaner and, and nicer 
without any artifacts. Now for these hard edges, it's pretty simple. I can uh, clean those up. I'll go to the polygon mode, select all these uh, faces and make sure everything is selected. Scroll down and inside this smoothing group, clear all and apply auto smooth again and then turn the polygon mode off. Now I can see a little weird kind of artifact but I'm going to fix that soon that shouldn't be a problem. Now in the next lesson I'm going to create an opening uh, here at the front of uh, the helmet so see you in the next lesson.